Well, my editing skills are crap, but can the same thing be said about Winchester? Stick around and find out. Anybody got that one? Any guesses? That's like a that's an old one. I'll give you a hint. Danny Elfman wrote that, if you couldn't tell from the style. And it's a TV show, not a movie. TV show, not a movie. Let me know in the comments if you, uh, if you know that one. All right. Uh, hi, I'm Peter Franston from ChristianGeekCentral.com and Spirit Blade Productions. This is my uncut review of Winchester. Uh, the synopsis on IMDb reads, Inspired by true events. On an isolated stretch of land 50 miles outside of San Francisco sits the most haunted house in the world. Built by Sarah Winchester, Academy Award winner Helen Mirren, heiress to the Winchester fortune, it is a house that knows no end. Constructed in an incessant 24-hour-a-day, seven-day-a-week mania for decades, it stands seven stories tall and contains hundreds of rooms. To the outsider, it looks like a monstrous monument to a disturbed woman's madness. But Sarah is not building for herself, for her niece, played by Sarah Snook, or for the brilliant Dr. Eric Price, played by Jason Clark, whom she has summoned to the house. She is building a prison, an asylum for hundreds of vengeful ghosts, and the most terrifying among them have a score to settle with the Winchesters. I've got a little bit more depth in my voice. I've been fighting a cold this week, so I'm trying to capitalize on, capitalize on that a little bit. Um, all right, so let me talk about, this is probably going to be a little bit of a shorter review than usual. Um, I didn't like this movie. Let me talk about the story and the script a little bit. Uh, it's a familiar ghost story formula with, you know, a spooky house, at least one kind of true believer, that's the widow Winchester, who uh, believes in all the ghosts and stuff, uh, who is in touch with the spirit world. And then you've got a skeptic, in this case, the doctor hired to evaluate the widow's mental health to see if she's still fit to uh, run half of the Winchester Rifle Company. Um, and, and it's a period piece, which is one thing that I'll give it. I was like, okay, that, may, that does make it a little bit different to have it be uh, a period piece. I, I think the last time I saw a ghost story that was the period piece was uh, The Others. Is that the Nicole Kidman movie? I think that was a period piece. I'm not sure. Anyway, so I mean, it had that going for it. But anyway, this doctor, it's in the early, like 1909 is when the movie takes place. And uh, the doctor comes to investigate, uh, and eventually, you know, he believes. That's kind of the formula of the, the skeptic in these things. Uh, they believe or they get killed, you know, right before they believe or whatever, or right, you know, after they believe. Uh, but unlike many ghost movies, uh, and perhaps because this one is based on true events, I should say actually inspired by, which means, you know, who knows how loosey-goosey they're playing with, uh, with history. Um, but, but perhaps because it's kind of grounded or inspired by true events, no one's getting killed by these ghosts. That was a big problem for me. Uh, the ghosts are mostly just moving things around and appearing in reflections of mirrors and all the usual misdirection, jump scare stuff that we've seen a bunch of times before in ghost movies. Uh, I did not find this movie scary at all. It, it, it got a couple flinches out of me. But no, like, jumps, you know? No edge-of-my-seat suspense. I mean, it was, it was like nothing for the, the, the entire experience. Uh, I think this was largely due to the lack of threat the ghosts presented to me for most of the movie. I just kind of felt like they were going to just kind of keep messing with people and maybe scaring some people, but I didn't, you know, I, I feel like even though it's formulaic, it's helpful to have someone get killed horribly, dying, screaming, early on, so that we are wondering who's going to go next, who is going to suffer the fate that that person suffered at the beginning, but they didn't have that kind of grab you at the beginning moment to show you how scary the ghosts were. They just kind of eased you slowly into, are there ghosts here? Are there not? Okay, pretty early on you realize, yeah, this is legit. This is really happening, you know. Um, I think there's some things they could have done to make it more of a question uh, because the doctor was abusing um, some medication uh, kind of keeping it quiet but it was caught it would cause him to hallucinate a little bit I think if they would have maybe shot the movie a little bit differently maybe um, or done a post production a little bit differently that maybe they could have made me wonder for a little bit are these just illusions or whatever you know but but now they give away pretty early on no these these ghosts are, are legit you know um, 
So anyway, uh, so largely due to the lack of threat that the ghost presented for most of the movie, and what, what seemed to me to be kind of like the lack of cinematic uh, originality in what the ghosts did, you know, uh, how they messed with people. Uh, was lots of beats we've seen before, you know, just little things rolling past and little things bumping or whatever, you know. Um, the script also felt long and full of repetitious story beats, especially when it came to people slowly walking around in the dark and turning around quickly as objects move, or they almost see something that maybe the audience sees, but they don't, you know. Um, there was a lot of that without it really paying off and going anywhere uh, until like the very, very end. Uh, I likely would have been much more interested in either a real documentary about the real history of the house and the widow. I think that would be kind of interesting to check out maybe. Or barring that, I think this could have made a good, for me at least, 45 minute episode of a supernatural anthology TV show. Um, so anyway, the, the cast was all fine. I do kind of wonder if I might have liked someone else better as the Widow, someone more strange and creepy than, than Helen Mirren. Um, you know, maybe an unknown in that role that was just kind of like more of a character actor would have been an interesting choice. I don't know. Uh, as far as visuals, there are a few visual effects, uh, but most things are being done practically, which I appreciate. Although, you know, that said, they're not doing a whole lot, you know, uh, visually, either practically or with uh, special effects. You know, there, there just wasn't a lot of, like, interesting visual ghosty stuff going on in this movie. Um, the house was also an interesting construct to look at. And it made me wonder, I, I was either like, dang, did they like build a replica of this whole house? I mean, it was kind of neat to look at. Um, or I, I, even, I even wondered, did they, could, it, could they be filming this like on the actual location? I kind of doubt that, but, it, but it, you know, it was interesting to look at, made me kind of wonder some of those things. Um, but the most striking visual feature to me, which I didn't think helped my experience, was the color palette. There was something about it that felt too kind of warm and, and mundane for the mood of a ghost story. Maybe I'm just used to creepy, washed out, cooler colors, you know, when it comes to these kinds of stories, but something felt, I don't know, kind of warm and and sunny and welcoming <laughs> about the environments a lot of the time. Uh, anyway, so I always try to ask myself, you know, when I'm watching a movie like this, is there anything of worthwhile moral, philosophical, or spiritual significance going on that might stimulate worthwhile thought or conversation? Uh, I... I for me, I don't think so, uh, unless you're specifically looking for something like I tend to do as I watch stuff like this. Um, like a number of ghost stories, God is left out of the equation in this movie. The afterlife is about a person being at peace with themselves and being at peace with the life that they lived and the choices they made. Uh, they don't come out and use the phrase, forgive yourself, but that does seem to be kind of a key component to having peace in the afterlife, which that doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, the, the whole idea of forgiveness giving yourself just logically doesn't make sense. Um, so it's not about facing, the afterlife in, in this movie is not about facing any kind of accountability. There aren't like really good spirits and, and really evil spirits. It's more about spirits that are angry or restless versus those who, who stick around, you know, and cause trouble versus those who are at peace with themselves and go away to who knows where. Uh, so in this kind of worldview, the individual is the highest authority in the afterlife. Likewise, those who successfully combat angry spirits, you know, who, who are still, those who are still alive, combating angry spirits, the, the most success, successful ones are those who draw on themselves, their own courage. Those who understand the most about the spiritual world are, are those who pay attention to their feelings and their intuition. So it really kind of all this together boils down to the popular spiritual thinking of today, which essentially is follow what you feel, you command your destiny, and you're the only one in charge of you. Um, the problem with thinking there is any hope to be found in this worldview uh, is that it doesn't hold up under examination. If I'm in charge of me in the afterlife, there's no reason to think that my character uh, will become more, more virtuous or be improved at all by the process of dying. Why, why would that happen? Unless something else is affecting me. Uh, but if I'm in charge of me, if I have nothing else is in, 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 you know, exerting any change or will upon me and my character, um, then why would I change just from the act of leaving this body and, you know, going into the afterlife or whatever? Um, and so, since I don't think there's any reason to think that that would happen, that means that I will still forever and uh, eternally in annoy, neglect, or hurt people like I do in this life right now. Uh, and if eternity is filled with people like that, then why should we think there's any possible peace after this life? 
uh, the reality is that we need something or someone that is external to ourselves to change us uh, and reshape our character. We have to willingly allow someone who is capable to do that to us so that we will be compatible contributors to an eternally living community that will remain at peace. Um, without something or someone to change us, we have no reason to think the next life will be any better than this one. In fact, a life just like this one that instead lasts forever, uh, for a lot of people that sounds a bit like hell. Anyway, I have no idea what your preferences are in movies, but if I were a time traveler, I would go back in time and say, Vader, skip this one. Um, maybe just do a Google search on the Winchester Mansion if you want a little bit of trivia. That might be interesting to read. This movie is going to have you bored out of your gourd. Uh, it's rated PG-13 for violence, disturbing images, drug content, some sexual material, and thematic elements. All right, those are my thoughts. I'd love... <clears throat> oh, man. Uh, those are my thoughts. I'd love to get yours in the comments below. Uh, please consider supporting this channel by becoming a Spirit Blade Insider, which grants you exclusive monthly behind-the-scenes content about me as I'm trying to spin all the plates of Spirit Blade Productions and Christian Geek Central and keep all these things going all by myself. For more uh, info, you can visit our About page at spiritblade.com, where you'll also find our audio dramas and our weekly podcast. And uh, if you want to like, share, and subscribe, that's also a nice way to help grow uh, this channel and the Christian Geek Central community. Finally, there is a ton more content and community over at Christian Geek Central. So I hope you'll join us there soon as we continue to geek out and seek the truth.